nestled in the sunny mountains near the southernmost tip of Switzerland is Lugano, city of beauty. Located on Lake Lugano, the city is surrounded by some of the most picturesque villages in southern Europe. The blue waters of the lake provide brilliant contrast for the lively colors of the boats which ply between Lugano and the scattered settlements along the shore. Lugano is a city of scenery and quiet pleasure. Many of its fine hotels ring the edge of the blue lake and offer the visitor a panoramic view of the wonders of the Swiss city. Along its streets glide Robin's Egg Blue streetcars, sharing space with the automobiles, bicyclists, and the rustling chestnut trees which border the lake. Like niches carved into the slope of the mountains, steep roadways connect the various sections of the city. High above the lake shore can be seen the ivy-colored walls of formal gardens, which enhance Lugano with their old world charm. While on the main streets of the city, a festive air prevails, even among the inhabitants. Sidewalk cafes are open at all hours of the day, and few can resist the temptation held forth by a cup of rich chocolate made famous by the Swiss. Here, where summer seems like spring, people of all ages gather to enjoy the sunshine and the breeze along the edge of the lake. Beautiful public parks go down to the water's edge, adding to the natural entrancement of Lugano. Unusual small boats propelled by foot and leg power are available for the athletically inclined visitor. Small power boats of unique design often skim across the surface of the lake as graceful as gulls. Here are exotic foreign automobiles to thrill the car lover sightseeing along the winding streets. For a traveler, one of the most interesting and unusual features of Lugano is the funicular or inclined railway. Taking the place of a conventional streetcar, it runs from one street level to another and saves having to walk up the mountainside slope of the city. For less than streetcar fare in most cities, Lugano's mid-city funicular provides uphill transportation and all the fun of a Ferris wheel ride at the circus. At the top of the funicular's run, one feels quiet awe at the serenity of the southern Swiss mountains and the vista of the misty blue valley unfolded before him. After exploring the sights and sounds of the city, the visitor to Lugano finds himself lured by the gentle blue waters of Lake Lugano, here in an almost unbelievably colorful setting. Boats of all kinds make their way against the backdrop of the green curtain of the surrounding mountainsides. Big ferry boats call every few minutes at several piers along the city's waterfront, picking up those who would enjoy the pleasures of the lake from the vantage point of the lake itself. Of course, many people are just commuters going from town to town on Lake Lugano, but all have the thrill of a water voyage as the big boats pull away from the shore. Their side wheel paddles digging into the soft, blue depths of the water. As Lugano's buildings and its fringe of chestnut trees glide past, we may be required to show our passports, for the boat calls at both Swiss and Italian ports in its journey around the lake. the beautiful private homes of some of the outstanding people of Europe come into view as we make the rounds of Lake Lugano's quaint villages. Tickets, tickets, cries the boatman, usually in several languages. And we pass the great mansion where once lived Fritz Tyson, the German steel magnate. This beautiful residence has been made into a gallery of art.
for the tourist, his fellow passengers may often be as interesting as the view of the surrounding countryside. Here your neighbor may be a traveler from Finland, England, Greece, or almost any country you can name. And there usually is a group of school-age students such as these Swiss girls, fascinated by the beauty of their own country. singing the old folk songs, handed down from generation to generation. But our eyes always return to the countryside as it passes in panoramic view off the port side of our boat. Tier upon tier of picturesque old buildings frame the mirror of the lake. An occasional swan comes out to meet our boat, hoping for a bit to eat. At every stop, people come out to see what new manner of entertainment the boat has to bring, with the Swiss studying the tourists and the tourists studying the Swiss. At every stop, we see something unusual, such as these small boys all decked out in gaily colored sombreros as they spend an afternoon on the water. One of the sights to be remembered always on our Lake Lugano cruise is the approach to Gandria, one of the most colorful villages in the world. Gondria's pastel-colored buildings have made it more famous as a model for the world's artists and photographers than as the fishing village from which it grew. But now we leave Lugano's lake and start another adventure. We enter the streetcar to paradise, a little blue streetcar that will start us on a remarkable journey up a mountainside. The little streetcar winds leisurely through the quaint streets of Lugano, taking us to the foot of the mountain. We arrive at the station of the funicular of San Salvatore and purchase a ticket for the trip to the top. Down the side of Mount San Salvatore comes the bright red cable car, which is built just for climbing this mountain. It is constructed on a slant, so that even in climbing the steep slope, passengers sit on the level. What excitement there is as we board the little car. We hear the babble of many languages around us, as people from many countries anticipate the ascent. Finally, a little bell rings, signaling the conductor, and up we go. Our view from the cable car is breathtaking as we slowly slide along the side of the mountain. Lugano sprawls out far below us. As the air grows cool with the altitude, and our hearts beat faster as the click, click, click of the wheels on the rails takes us higher and higher. Arriving safely near the top of the mountain, we leave the funicular and have lunch at the restaurant which clings to the rocks thousands of feet above our hotel. Warmed by the brilliant sun and tempted by the good Swiss cooking, the visitor may decide to spend hours in this one spot enjoying the wonders of the Swiss landscape. Atop Mount San Salvatore, we find Barry, the venerable old Saint Bernard who makes his living, and that of his master, posing for pictures with tourists. Finally, we climb to the church at the summit of the mountain for the most breathtaking view of our trip, the toy-like city of Lugano spread out beneath the cross of San Salvatore. 
minutes later, we are back to the lake's edge in the streets of Lugano. The city, which seemed like a toy, has regained its life-size perspective. Lugano, a city of people at ease, a city of happiness, of vacation and recreation. Lugano, where there is still time in a hurried world for quiet moments alone with your thoughts. We will never forget the old fisherman of Lugano, a man and a boy and a fishing pole. Timeless symbol of restfulness. We will never forget the sapphire blue lake in its setting of majestic greenery jeweled with villas and gardens, or the chuffing of the boats in the soft southern air. Yes, Lugano will live with us always as a place of quiet beauty, a place of sunshine and peace, sheltered from the cares of the world. Lugano of the lake, city of beauty.